Welcome to our worship in the Anglican Parish of Gisborne for the fifth Sunday of the season of Pentecost, July the 5th, the year 2020. Through Christ, let us offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Open our lips, O Lord, and, and we, we shall, shall declare your praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. We, we will rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. it. Friends in Christ, we have come together to meet with God and to take our part in the building up of his church. We will lift our hearts in thanks and praise, hear from God's holy word, and pray for this world and for ourselves. The Bible tells us to approach God confidently through our Lord Jesus Christ, and as we do so, we must confess our sins, seeking forgiveness through God's boundless goodness and mercy. Let us draw near to God with sincerity and confidence and pray together. God, God of all mercy, we humbly admit that we need your help. We have wandered from your way. We have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what is right. You alone can save us. Have mercy on us. Wipe out our sins and teach us to forgive others. Bring forth in us the fruit of your Spirit, that we may live the new life to your glory. This we ask in the name of Jesus our Saviour. Amen. God desires that none should perish, but that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Grace and peace be with you. And, and also with, with you. you. Come, Come, let us sing to the Lord. Shout to the rock of our salvation. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his face with songs of joy. Now let's pray. Heavenly Father, give us wisdom and understanding as we listen to your word. May we know you better, love you more, and learn to please you in all we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul to the Romans. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold into slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do what the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. 
But in fact, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing is good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now I do what I do not want. It is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. May your word live in us. And bear and much fruit to your glory. The response to Psalm 45, The people shall praise you forever. The, the people, people shall praise you forever. Hear, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your own people and your father's house. So shall the king have pleasure in your beauty. He is your Lord, so do him honour. The, the people shall praise you forever. The people of Tyre shall bring you gifts. The richest of people shall seek your favour. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is embroidered cloth of gold. The people shall praise you forever. She shall be brought in to the king in raiment of needlework. After her, the virgins that are her companions. With joy and gladness shall they be brought and enter into the palace of the king. The, the people, people shall praise you forever. Instead of your fathers, you shall have sons, whom you shall make princes over all the land. I will make your name to be remembered through all generations. Therefore shall the people praise you for ever and ever. The people shall praise you forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew chapter 11 beginning at the 15th verse. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, let anyone with ears listen. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look! a glutton, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Behind me today is a picture of an area not far from our family home in a small locality known as Rayana. It's a beautiful place with this beautiful lush countryside and you can see there that wonderful rich chocolate red soil that is just absolutely wonderful for growing all matter of vegetables. 
My family had a farm not far from here, but I was way too young to even have any recollection of, of that particular place, having been born in the township uh, of Penguin, which is the main settlement. One of the things, though, that was important in the folklore of the place was that of the bullock dray. Now, we know that across um, Australia, the bullocky is certainly has a very colourful and um, interesting place in our folklore. I do remember going up to Ryanna at some stage to see the, a bullocky at work um, across the showgrounds. And it was very interesting to see and hear what he was doing. As my mother would have said, you may know those words now, but you're not allowed to use them. Each bullock, sometimes a team of eight, just drawing the one log out, would have, or even ploughing, but more likely logging, would be yoked to one another. And in the image of today's gospel, it is the yoke that comes strongly to mind. Yokes are about enabling. Yokes are also are about restricting. Sometimes in faith, we need to know the difference when to be restrained in what we do and when we need to be enabled to do what we do. In the context today, this is a shortened passage of the gospel. The passage follows immediately on from the commissioning and the warning last week about what we are to do in terms of being hospitable people. Hospitality is at the heart of this reading. In terms of receiving the presence of God, the people who knew better, the people for whom the prophecy was real, were expecting their idea of a Messiah who would release them from captivity. In this case, the captivity being that of the Romans. So they were looking for someone who was really holy. But as Jesus says, you were sent someone holy. You were sent John the Baptist. He was a Nazarene. He did not eat food that was forbidden. He did not take strong drink. He may have looked a bit eccentric, but he lived a life of prayer and proclaimed repentance. And you said, too religious, he obviously has a demon. We want a Messiah who is more like one of us. And so on comes Jesus. And he, apparently, liked a good party. And what do they call him? A drunkard, a glutton. He likens this reception in Israel to children calling across the school ground. We played music for you, but you did not dance. We sang you sad songs, and you did not cry. The passage which is missed out in there before we start the prayer of Jesus, talks about hospitality and how those outside Israel, having looked at the lessons that have been handed down through generations, would be received. Tyre, Sidon, Sodom, Gomorrah. All of them were charged with a lack of hospitality. And yet, Jesus says that that current generation It'll be better for them than those who knew what was coming and reject it for those who failed to heed the warnings at the time. Again, this idea of the little ones comes to the fore in what Jesus says. I have revealed this to my little ones. The people who are not wise and learned, I've given this to those who are looking and wanting and needing to, to receive comfort and to be enabled to move on. And so we go into those beautiful, comfortable words that are there in the Book of Common Prayer that many of us have etched in our minds. We are told to come to Jesus, who, when we are heavy burden, will take a yoke upon us and share the load. We will be enabled. 
will be sometimes held back. At the moment, the community is yoked by the spread of coronavirus. And yet at the same time, we're also enabled to continue to offer hospitality, to reach out and to encourage one another. Certainly, the times are difficult and the weather at the moment, with its grey and coldness, makes it very challenging. However, even in these times, we know that God is with us. I'm going to share with you another picture from Brianna, just to remind my, partly reminding myself of what it was like to be, to be there, but also just a reminder that sometimes even the most beautiful of pictures can be, for us at time, a little bit on the cold side. And there we go. Not far from, this, not far from where that photo was taken in Pine Road. And just a reminder that the weather can turn just as much easily in Tasmania as it can here in the Macedon Ranges. Take the words of Jesus to heart and mind. Take his yoke upon you and learn from him. For his burden is light, yet he has a very easy load. God's grace be with you. The Lord be with you. And And also also with you. Let us join together in the prayer which Jesus gave us. Our Our Father Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your Your kingdom come, your your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
Be exalted, Lord, above the heavens. Let Let your glory cover the earth. Keep our nation under your care. And guide guide us in justice and truth. Let your way be known on earth. Your saving power among among all nations. nations. Send out your light and your truth. That That we we may tell of your saving works. Have mercy on the poor and oppressed. Hear Hear the cry of of those in need. Hear our prayers, O Lord. For we put our trust in you. Christ our teacher, gentle and humble of heart, give us an attentive ear for word and a mind ready to contemplate what we hear, so that we may discover the wisdom hidden from the wise and manifest it before this generation in all we say and do. So shall you be glorified with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and always, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the Church. Gracious and merciful God, you have promised rest to the weary and relief to the heavy laden. Hear the prayers we bring for your people. We pray for those weighed down by the hardships of daily life, for those who live in poverty without adequate food or shelter, for those in places of war, civilians, soldiers and refugees. Relieve their burdens that all your people may live in dignity and peace. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those wearied by responsibility in your church, for those without the resources to fulfil their tasks, those whose dreams are shattered, whose visions others do not share. Renew their spirits, that they may find their strength in you. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those exhausted by overwork or the responsibility of care for carers of young children, of the disabled and the infirm, for those unable to provide for their families or themselves. Lighten their loads that they may know your encouragement and support. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. Pray for those burdened by guilt, self-doubt, anxiety or despair. For those unable to leave behind the past, for those afraid of the present and without hope for the future. Lift these weights from them that they may let go of their fears. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray for those worn down by pain, grief or sense of uselessness. For those whom society does not value or want. For the lonely, the friendless, the sick and the dying. We uphold in our prayers those whose names will be placed on our altars, particularly remembering this week Father Don. And also for the family of Phil Skillet and Bernie Crutchfield. Soothe their hurt and calm their distress, that they may find their peace in you. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. We remember all those who have died in your love, especially those dear to us and those from this parish whose yearly memorial occurs at this time. We remember with love and gratitude the life of Lorraine Covington, Deacon, Charles Hutchinson, father of Rosemary Homewood, and give thanks for the lives of Phyllis Gillett and Bernard Crutchfield. Rest eternal, grant of them, Lord, let light perpetual shine upon them. In life, teach us to follow the example of your Son, that we may learn to share each other's burdens, and in death bring us into your presence, that our souls may find eternal rest in you. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. In a moment of quiet, we offer our own prayers of thanksgiving and petition. We give thanks to God for the birth of Samuel Ernest Clark, 
a son to Rebecca and Rowan, a much-loved brother for Maisie and Evie. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We offer our prayers together as we pray. Father of Jesus Christ, open our hearts to your word and to the power of the Spirit. Give us love to discover your will and strength to carry it out today. For you are our light forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord, you have given us grace to agree in these our prayers. And you have promised that when two or three gather in your name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and prayers as may be best for us. Grant us in this life knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life eternal. Amen. Amen. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The grace Grace of our Lord Lord Jesus Christ Christ, and the the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. A reminder to join us today for Virtual Morning Tea at Sunday, 10.30am, www.bit.ly forward slash gizang vmt, all in capitals. For the moment, we will continue our pattern of morning prayer and services online until we have some more clearer guidelines from our government. Our thanks to the voices today, Ben, Alison, Janice, Lorna, Father David, and of course, from me, Father Dennis. Goodbye. And to take us out, what a wonderful world, performed on harp by Lucy Forrest. Thank you.